Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John. Welcome to Let's Talk Chiropractic. Dr. Alex is at the other end down here. We have our beautiful Tara and Kathy. They're going to talk about how Dr. Alex takes care of them. So Tara, give us a little bit of information. Tell us about yourself a little bit. Um, well, my name's Tara. I have scoliosis, but I'm just a full-time office administrator, sit at a desk eight plus hours a day, cat, pet mom, cat mom, dog mom, love it all. Good girl, how about you, Kat? What do you do? I'm 58 years old right now. I just stay home with my cat. This is my daughter. I already raised my kids, so now my cat's my baby. <laughs> What's always exciting about this show, in my opinion, is, you know, Dr. Alex, people are always wondering, how much do we pay these actors? I think it's important if we get on TV and we tell how much we love what we do, it's more valuable, I think, if they just share their own story. So go get yourself a glass of ice water or a nice warm coffee for tonight and come back. Let's hear each other's stories. Hi folks, welcome back again to Let's Talk Chiropractor. We're going to talk to Tara first today if we can. So Tara, give us a little history. What first brought you to see Dr. Alex? What first brought me here was my mom was originally seeing Dr. Alex. She recommended me due to my scoliosis, said it would probably be something that I wouldn't want to look into. And that is how I found myself here today. Dr. Alex, if it's okay to ask you, some patients watching probably don't know what scoliosis is. Give a brief explanation of what is scoliosis. Right, so when we have scoliosis, there's two groups and people will get lost in the diagnosis sometimes, but the functional scoliosis is, that's just when you see a teenager who because of their posture, they start to get a lateral sideways bending of the spine. But if it's just functional, that means we can change it real easily just with postural stuff. Now what you have going on is where there's a structural. Your scoliosis is there no matter how well you behave. It's gonna be there. And once we hit 25 years old, that's the point of no return. This scoliosis will be with you your whole life, so how do we deal with it? How's your posture been, Tara? Uh, I believe my posture's been actually really well. I Good. feel like I've had a lot of improvement, more mobility, more ease of just sitting correct, which is definitely a plus. I've had patients call me in the past and they'll say, because I have scoliosis, I don't think I should see a chiropractor. My doctor has told me not to go or I'm afraid to go. Mm -hmm. Give people who have never been to a chiropractor who have scoliosis right now, give them an idea. What does an adjustment feel like by Dr. Alex? An adjustment with Dr. Alex is actually very, very easy. It's very simple. It starts with my hips, feels where he should put the focus on. It's not just crunching and cracking my entire spine and neck. He sees what needs to be worked on, he focuses there, and we work on that week after week till that is slowly but surely taken care of. So. And you're going to be getting massage because of this show then, right? Of course. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> and Kathy, how about you now? Let's talk to you a little bit. Did you, you, I guess you first came under Dr. Alex's mm -hmm. care and then you got your daughter to come? Yes. Why did you first see Dr. Alex? Because in the summer, the beginning of the summer, I slid in the mud and both my legs went out in different directions and messed up my hips somehow and I couldn't even barely walk. Do you remember way back then you thought that maybe you needed a new mm -hmm. right hip replacement? Yes. So uh, a lot of people watching the show, yes. they, they get doc confused, Dr. Alex. Like, if the pain is on my hip, yeah, we work on what we call a sacroiliac joint. I always try to make the connection. If the back's in alignment, it takes pressure off the hip though. Mm -hmm. so, so Dr. Alex never really worked on your hip socket. But he would adjust your right sacroiliac mm -hmm. yes. joint though, right? What is the adjustment like for the viewers? Oh, it's uh, basically, yeah, he just checks to see if the hip's even or not. And if it's out of place, he gets it back. I feel amazing. Before I was coming to him, I could barely walk two blocks. Now I'm back to taking my walks and doing good. You, know, you could ask him, Alex, I, I never get tired of hearing what she just said. You know, there are a thousand people out there that could barely walk. The doctors are telling them it's arthritis. Take your pills. I'm not against pills at times, but what I love as a chiropractor, even after all these years, getting people in alignment and seeing that they're much more functional. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be later showing you, Dr. Alex is going to adjust each of them. So when, when she says, I'm level, 
A chiropractic patient knows what she's talking about. <laughs> a non-chiropractic patient probably thinks maybe your head was gone <laughs> straight or something. You know, so we're going to adjust each of them so people can see what an adjustment is like, even with scoliosis. Okay, okay, folks, let's wrap up for the first segment. We're going to talk in the second segment more about different things concerning scoliosis and maybe how maybe it's a little bit different to adjust them. So, again, go get a nice glass of ice water and come right back. Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk Chiropractic. We're having a good show with Dr. Alex's patients, Tara and her mother, Kathy. You know, one of the most frequent questions I'm asked, like well, now's the time to go to Christmas parties. I go to this New Year's Eve party, there's always about 70 people. Three or four people say to me, I'm afraid to see a chiropractor because once I go, I have to always keep going, that, that you're hooked. And I say to them, you know, to me it's like going to a gym. If I want to keep in shape, I keep going to the gym. If I get tired of the gym and I want to stop going, I, I stop going to the gym. So there's no forcefulness on our parts to keep people coming. But for both of you, for those people watching that have never been to chiropractic and they think it's a one-shot kind of a thing, Dr. Alex talks about maintenance care. That as you both improve, you're going to be coming once a month. Try to explain to people, why come once a month? Why not just come when you're hurting terror? Like, why would you like to come for maintenance care once in a while? Specifically for me, I see with my scoliosis, I have increased mobility, better flexibility. And even when I come and I'm feeling perfectly fine, he always has something to tell me like, hey, you're a quarter inch off here. Or, oh, I can feel you're a little, your neck's a little wonky today. And I'm, I'm like, well, and today I felt wonderful. So good thing I came because I feel like down the line, it would have only progressed to the point where it was no longer just feeling fine. And then I would have needed something more than just maintenance care. You're a little bit of a special case though, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> definitely not the average chiropractor patient. <laughs> but there's a lot of factors. You know, like she said, she's a pet mom. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone like your parents, you just said they have some big dogs. That's right. You know, if someone has a job that, you know, we have to be like detectives. Mm -hmm. We have to get to know all the details of our patients' lives. So if someone has a 70, 80, 100 pound dog that pulls them every night, you know, that's a factor that we need to know about. Mm -hmm. you know, so Dr. Alex is slowly trying to get you to become once a month as time goes on. So you're at, what, every week at this point? I'm still every week, yep. So Dr. Alex, explain to the patients, what is like a, a treatment plan? How do you determine if she's at once a week and she's at every two weeks? Right. Uh, what I like to use is a ruling stick that's simple to understand for patients is, let's just use the example of your hips, okay? Let's say your hips are really bad or kind of bad. <laughs> Okay, and how long are they really bad, or how long are they kind of bad? Uh, you're not in terrible pain, let's say, okay, and your hips are kind of wonky. They're not staying put, and I'm seeing you once a week, and every week I'm looking. I'm saying, okay, I expect this to take, let's say, I, the first time I saw you, I might have said six weeks. We're doing once a week. Maybe we started at twice a week because maybe it was, there was a lot of pain involved. But let's say we're doing that once a week. I'm looking at your hips every time, and I'm talking to you, and I'm saying, hey, look at that. You stayed even for a week. That's awesome. And how do you feel? I feel great. All right. Now this treatment plan, this plan where we're not just saying we're one and done because we know life gets in the way and this thing's going to remember what it was like and it, it doesn't stay stable. We're fighting for that stability. So it stays even for a week. We say, let's try two weeks. Wow. It stayed even for two weeks. That's incredible. Let's try three weeks or even a month. And that's when we, when we get that even for a month, I'm convinced we found stability. That's when we talk about the maintenance plan. You're feeling great, no symptoms anymore. Your hips are staying stable. Look at this spine, look at how functional you are. Do you wanna keep coming? You don't have to. Uh, I love seeing you, but we're not gonna twist your arm. <laughs> now in your case with scoliosis, we know that it's been harder. So your treatment plan is longer. So we do have a difference here because Kathy here, she's already at the next step of her treatment plan. She's gone to every other week. But with you, it's a little bit different. With the scoliosis, we've been fighting at that once a week. So everybody is a little different. And sometimes it can be frustrating. Sometimes it can be a huge relief. Mm -hmm. But that's why I like to have a flexible treatment plan. And this is one of the golden eggs that you've given me in my short career here. Having a nice flexible treatment plan helps me to individualize the care of every patient. 
Every time you come in, we're going to learn something new today. Not just you, but also me. About how your body's responding to chiropractic. And they have a, Tara has a brother, Doug. So why do you think, Kathy, why do you think Doug needs to get into Dr. Alex's care? What, what's his story? Oh, he's got some kind of pulled muscle or something going on in the middle of his back. And I gave him all the information to get in touch with you guys. <laughs> but that's even that. The greatest compliment, when you go to a good restaurant or a good movie, you now tell others. So one of the greatest compliments, when Kathy knows that her son needs chiropractic care, and she could tell him about it. So it's nice that when you help Doug, and then Doug might bring one of his buddies in, so it just, the list just keeps going on. Yeah, that is nice. And they're going to be getting massages. Did you ever get a massage at this office before? No. <laughs> they're pretty nice. You know, I, I've been on vacation, Alex, and yeah, you go in there wherever, in the Dominican Republic, and you pay $100 for a massage. Here, to be honest, it's $50. Mm -hmm. No charge for you guys, of course. That's a little gift for you guys coming. But the $50 massage that our girls give, to me, it was better than the ones I paid for on vacation. <laughs> so it's a joy to, you can either get just your back massaged, a lot of girls get a full body massage, like their arms and their legs, mm -hmm. all within the 45 minutes. So, so patients will say, well, if I get my full body, do they still give me more time? <laughs> I said, no, they'll have to spend less time on your back, <laughs> but more time on your arms and legs and wrists and things like that. I think if I was a patient or uh, someone watching this show, I want to see what this adjustment is like. What do you think? Uh -huh. Who wants to go first? I always go first. <laughs> okay. So folks, we can go right down the hall. I want you to see what an actual adjustment is like. We have a high-low table where you don't have to like crawl on the table at all, Tara. Nope. You know, you're nice and young, but if you have a lot of pain, getting down on and off a table is not easy. So we call it a high-low table. Cat, or, and we'll do with Tara first. She'll stand. Table takes her down. Dr. Alex will do his thing. Then it brings her back up. Same thing with Kathy. So this is actually what we do at this office. I, a lot of our patients, they went on Hulu. There's a guy who's really rough. He gets a rope and pull. So I, I want to say this nicely. There are some rough chiropractors. I think our technique is enough to get the job done, but it's not too scary. I don't think patients are ever afraid like, to come back for the second visit. So, so come and see what the adjustment is like and have a great holiday. And maybe after the holidays, come and give us a try. Tara here, she's ready for her appointment. Now, as is tradition with these two, Tara always goes first. I think we're building up the nerve here for Kathy, right? <laughs> we'll go face down. Now, last time I saw you, we were about a quarter inch off. Mm -hmm. It's common for me to find her hips to be a little bit off when I check her. So, you can see on her back, up here, we got high ribs, and these muscles are tight. And then over here, you can feel this is the curves of her scoliosis. So I'm paying close attention to this. I, I don't want to straighten these curves, believe it or not. I want to make them functional. I'm going to work from the outside of the curve to give it the ability to move the way that this body was intended to. Her body isn't built like everybody else's body. I've got to make it functional the way it's built. I'm not going to work outside of the box and try to make her fit in the box. That's just going to hurt her. So let me check these hips. We're going to go to the leg lengths, and of course, she's off again. And just like that, it was short on the right when we were down, but now it's high on the right. So, this is the same list that we dealt with the last time she came in. I hope you're not getting frustrated that you've had the same listing a lot of times. Never. I appreciate that. You're a patient, patient. <laughs> yeah. Patient, patient. That's good. Patience is a virtue after all. And with her, I always get a small noise when I do that drop adjustment, but that's not the usual case. I think something about the shape of this creates a little pocket there that tends to make a little bit more noise. Right? We always get that little click. Always that noise, but yeah, never always hurts. Always that little click. And let's see, sometimes her hips fight me a little bit, but they're not fighting today, so thank God. We got them even in the first attempt. Dr. John, let me tell you, that's not always the case. <laughs> that's not always the case. All right, so we work from the outside of this curve, which on this side is over here. So breathe in and breathe out. And I'm even untwisting it a little bit. That tension spot in the middle is trouble. Breathe in and breathe all the way out. I lean all the way across because I don't want to push it into that direction. That's just going to hurt her. 
and it feels pretty good actually. I know it looks like such a mess because scoliosis looks messy, but this is very functional from here to here. Let me check the top, not too bad. Lie on your side, facing me. And actually, it was when Dr. John saw her when I was on vacation that we first tried this side posture move. I never attempted it because I thought with her scoliosis, it's simpler. Let me just try it, you know, with, with her lying down. But I came back and she said, hey, Dr. John tried it on the side and it felt great. So I said, I got to do that then. Very good. Yeah, I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to let him show me up, right? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Let's give it a little turn. Just like that. That's great. And we'll do the other side for the sake of the hip, but I don't think it needs anything. When I get them even using the drops, there's no need for this, but I, sometimes that joint's got such an irregular shape, it just falls in every once in a while. So, so just like that, and didn't need anything today. We'll go face up. You used to have migraines too, didn't you? Yes, very frequent. At least two times a month. I have not had a migraine in at least four or five months. Not even a slight headache. That's great. That's beautiful. Good job, me too. And you know that was my introduction to chiropractic. And I had no idea it was even related. I know, it's hard to believe. I assumed it was head, right? I assumed it was sitting at a computer all day and Well it kind of was. <laughs> we'll relax as best we can. Yeah. Just like that. Little, little noise. Right? Yeah. You can hardly hear it. But that's all it takes. It doesn't take a whole ton of force. We'll relax as best we can, pretending the world's not watching. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Alright, and that's it for you. And this is how it would be a normal appointment. We don't do them with one waiting back there. They're a family. I keep them together. No need to do it separately. So we'll switch. Good? Good. Perfect. Yeah, we're all together. And how are we doing today, by the way? I'm, I'm betcha I'm even. Yeah, you betcha you're even. <laughs> You've been doing pretty good yeah, recently. Yeah, it feels good. You're getting towards the end of your treatment plan, which is a beautiful thing. I love that part of the treatment plan. We'll get there one day. You're being a patient. To it. You're being a patient patient. <laughs> Gotta trust the okay. process. That's right, trust the process. All right. Let's feel. And there is a little bit of a squiggle, but scoliosis by definition has to be at, less, at least 10 degrees. And I bet you if we took an x-ray, there'd be a little bit of a turn, but there's not that much. So genetically, there was some of this from your mother, but it's not, you know, some of it is just you. <laughs> so you here, a little bit of a squiggle, but not as much of an issue. And I wouldn't call it scoliosis. And she's right. What do you know? Ready to go, cat. <laughs> she's even. And look at that. See how easy these knees move when she's even? No pain at all, right? No. That's awesome. Now, if, I can't remember your listing without my notes. So normally I would give this a little reinforcement, but I hate to put it in the wrong direction. So we'll leave it alone for now. Unless, okay. do you remember, is it usually your right hip then? Yep. All right, and you know what, now that rings a bell. So we will adjust just a little stretch, and you'll see how gentle, I'm even putting my knee on it to take a little bit of the force off, because I just want to stretch it. I would never want to overdo it. I don't want to over adjust anybody. That'd be a ridiculous. It's like uh, when you see those crazy contortionists, that's overstretched, we don't yeah. need to do that. And uh, I just make sure that everything still lines up when we're done. All right, because maybe I'm paranoid, but I always want to check. All right, breathe in. And out. Yeah, good. Breathe in. And all the way out. Yeah, a little movement. Not too bad, though. And when I find tension here, Kathy, that's probably just the stress in your life. <laughs> There's fascial lines. This is the envelopes that hold your muscles. They cross here. So if I find something right there, it's not that big a deal. I could probably find that on 9 out of 10 people, something like that. Yeah, something like 9 out of 10 people. That little spot in the middle. You'd have to be pretty relaxed. And nowadays, 2021, almost 2022, it's hard to get relaxed that much. I'm just bouncing out the top. All right. So let's flip you up. We'll check that neck. Actually, do I normally crack your neck or do I do it with the drops, Kathy? No, you usually crack it. All right, we'll flip. All right. And how is your neck? Is it doing all right? It's a little sore on the right side. A little sore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if there's anything about that. Or if your muscles are tight. Have you been misbehaving? Are you sleeping okay? No, I'm not sleeping right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's probably what it's from. A little relaxed as best you can. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Not much. 
I'm not getting it to move. We'll relax best you can. Let's see this. Yeah, geez. Relax as best you can. Yeah, I'm not getting it to move. So I don't force it. I don't want to... If I'm fighting against these muscles and I pull real hard, I'm just going to cause trouble. Mm -hmm. So today we're leaving it. And my instruction will be, first, to have our next adjustment without a camera crew. <laughs> Second, to put heat on it at night. That heat mm -hmm. will help to loosen it up, give it a nice, uh, a more giving feel to it so that I can do my job easier. Heat at night. I've told you that before. Mm -hmm. I know I have. I know. And I usually do every night. I don't, I live with my heating pad. <laughs> there you go. Or a hot shower right before bed is pretty good. All right. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you here. You two did a wonderful job. And that's all. I feel brand new. Thank you. Great. Good job. How's your voice? It's doing all right. Happy holidays, everybody.